Welcome to Bible 360, the three letters of John. 1 John is distinctly different from most of the other epistles. Whereas most of them move in a straightforward, linear fashion, John circles around themes like a whirlpool drawing us in. He builds them up to a crescendo that reverberates in our souls. Most of the themes John uses can be traced directly back to Jesus' sayings in the Gospel of John. John likes to start his books in the beginning which means connecting Jesus to creation. This points out, first of all, Christ's divinity and also underlines that life begins with Jesus. In fact, John uses the word God to both refer to the Father and the Son. Jesus' words give life, and we should build our lives upon Jesus. John is not talking here about a philosophy or a religious concept, but about a person, a real person whom John has seen with his eyes and heard with his ears. Only by trusting in Jesus can we receive life and anyone who rejects Jesus is rejecting life. John leaves no room for compromise. We absolutely must proclaim that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh, died, and rose again. Jesus, body and all, is the bridge linking us from death to life, from the devil to the Father, from darkness to light. It really is quite simple. Only in the real, living, breathing, resurrected Jesus can there be life, because he is alive. Apart from Jesus and his body, God in the flesh, Killed and resurrected, we cannot find life or survive death, which makes Jesus' gospel a true gift, light breaking forth in a darkness. Of course, the darkness of evil within us is inconsistent with the light of Christ. But when we expose the darkness to the light, confessing our sins, the light wins. As Jesus forgives our sins, John tells us we should not sin. Indeed, much of his book is exhorting us not to sin or stray from the light and the goodness of fellowship with God. But when we confess our sins, God forgives. John is confronting a group of leaders or who deny Jesus was genuinely a human being. Perhaps because they are obsessed with secret knowledge or fascinating religious ideas, they have little positive guidance about morality or the physical world and therefore allow for, or maybe even advocate for, making compromises. John's strong contrasts, light and darkness, fear and love, truth and lies, undercut this kind of reasoning and compromising. Following the truth and the light, Jesus is not simply a minor adjustment. John takes turns describing the flesh, the world, and the devil as diametrically opposed to the will of God. So don't compromise with sin, lust, or evil. And we can't make friends with or cozy up to a religious idea that refuses to acknowledge these foundational truths, namely Jesus' incarnation, his death and resurrection, living lives of love, and fellowship with God. John harps on the tight connection between identity and actions. Who we are and what we do cannot be isolated from each other. Those who are of the devil do the things the devil does. Whoever loves God carries out the commands of God. Since we are now God's children, we do the Father's will. If we make a practice out of sinning, we must not really be the children of God. Perhaps the most important theme in 1 John is love. At times, John can barely say five words without saying love. In fact, John says God is love. John does not leave this definition up for grabs, however. It's very specific and centers around Christ. Love starts with God, since it is not we who first loved him, but he who first loved us. The way he showed us this love was by sending Jesus to redeem us from sin and darkness. Love is central to our faith, so central that John says, he who hates his brother or sister in Christ is simply lying. Hate, bitterness, and jealousy are what caused the first murder as when Cain killed his own brother. And everyone who hates his brother is on the road to murder. Yet even though humans are full of hatred and ultimately murder, Jesus willingly did the opposite, laying down his life upon the cross for the very ones murdering him. Contrary to what some think, love does not compel us to accept sin. It does the opposite. We don't just accept everything the world does. In fact, the world stands in contrast to the instructions and will of God. We should not obey or bow down to the deceptive, dying, dark world. We must let the light of Christ shine brightly in our lives. We must love our brothers and sisters in Christ, but we must stand firm as the light shining in the darkness, testifying that life comes only through Christ. 1 John ends rather abruptly, stating that we are from God and the whole world is under the power of the evil one. Since we know the truth, Jesus Christ, 
We cannot worship or live according to feudal lies. Sometimes it feels like John is jerking us back and forth when he addresses sin. John is insistent that we avoid sin and gives us all sorts of compelling reasons to do so. Yet he also says he who claims to be without sin is a liar. He makes it clear. God forgives our sins and cleanses us from all unrighteousness. So what gives? Well, this is a wonderful lesson in reality Christians should embrace. Sin truly is the worst. It plants seeds of hatred and death and is opposed to all that is good and right and loving. Yet God's grace overcomes sin, death, and hatred. So we shouldn't embrace sinning, but we should embrace confessing our sins. Second and third John build upon and highlight what is already elaborated in first John. Walk in the light of Christ, following God's instructions, and do not fall prey to unfaithful teaching. Rather, recognize Jesus as true human and our only Savior. In 2 John, he warns a specific house church not to welcome certain false teachers who are probably going to come looking for their help and support. 3 John tells a specific person to support and welcome one person who is being faithful and to reject a specific person who is opposing the pure gospel. Both 1st and 2nd and 3rd John highlight John's overarching desire that we acknowledge Jesus as Lord while embracing God's instructions and rejecting wickedness.